you cannot tickle yourself. Why can you not tickle yourself? Please. Very good, because you already eh, anticipated. So the moment you tickle yourself, in a way your body is programmed to ignore. But the moment you would tickle your neighbor right now, <laughs> very good, the moment you would tickle your neighbor right now, then you get an interaction. And that's, I think, something incredibly fascinating. So apparently, we somehow are programmed to have certain experience we cannot do alone, yes? We need to work together to create something new. And for me, as a maker, as a designer, as an inventor, as a, as a hunter for new ideas, I love that so much. How can we make cities, places which are good for people again, in places like Mumbai? And in a way, it starts with materials. Here, we developed phosphorin coatings, which charge at daytime, glow at night, up to eight hours. You know the material. We went back to the lab, upgraded it, and looked at the famous Van Gogh paintings, the, the, the famous Dutch painter, in an area where he actually worked and lived, in Eindhoven, in the Netherlands. And we started to sort of connect these worlds. Uh, a bicycle path through the area where Van Gogh worked and lived, um, open for public. If you're ever in the Netherlands, please come by. Uh, no ticket needed. Short movie. What happens when you make innovation tactile? Two special things happen. The word of hard capital and soft capital wake up. Yeah? So it's very important that you test ideas, you make them concrete. So the hard capital is that sheikhs from Qatar start to call how much for 10 kilometers, yeah? <laughs> which is good for business and we can do more. But what is more important, I think, or as important, is the world of soft capital. Yes? This is a children's book which was sent to us a couple of weeks ago. We did not know anything about this. Eh? And in this book, they explore Van Gogh and they visit the bicycle path in that book. Here, they made a copycat here, you see? So we have a whole new generation of children growing up thinking light-emitting bicycle paths is completely normal, yes? <laughs> so we have children who will be looking at bicycle paths, you and I know right now, and say, hey, mama, this one doesn't work. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is good, I think. So, the key of design for me is not about making another chair or another lamp or another table, but it's about improving life, yes? Working together with scientists, mayors, young makers, people like you and me, to say, how can we create places which are poetic and practical at the same time? And in a way, that all starts with questioning as well. Why or how does a jellyfish or a firefly emits light eh, without battery, without solar panel, without maintenance contract? Or why do we accept pollution? Eh, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time in China. This is Beijing, the room, the 32nd floor. So on the right is a good day. Life is okay. I can see the world around me, eh, the trees, the people, the stars. And on the left side, this is when Wednesday and Thursday starts kicking in, all the factories and the car, you know? Pollution. It's really weird that we sort of accept that as something normal. And so I, on one hand, this image, I got a bit sad, you know, like, is this progress? Is this the city you and I want to live in? No. So maybe I thought like, ah, if Van Gogh has paint, maybe I have my smoke particles. Maybe I can use that to design. And I remember this, 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 this thing uh, when I was a boy, I'm the son of a math teacher. So, so I'm being haunted by these, you know what, uh, stories my whole life. But I, 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 was, I was playing with these very boring children parties a long time ago with these plastic balloons, yes? 
And so when you polish a plastic balloon with your hands, it becomes static. Very good. Static electrified. It starts to attract your hair. And when I was a boy, I even remembered, like, wow, that's like a gift from planet Earth, eh? pure science, pure art. And two days later, under the shower, I'm like, what if we would sort of take that principle and literally build the largest smog vacuum cleaner in the world, which sucks up polluted air, cleans it, and then spits out the clean air, creating parks, playgrounds, which are the cleanest in the city. And two years later, we realized it. This is, yeah, we suck up polluted air, 30,000 cubic meter it cleans per hour, using no more electricity than a water boiler, 1100 watts, spits out the clean air, um, and it cleans it on a nano level, eh, the ultra, ultra fine particle. So you have playground parks which are 75% more clean than the rest of the city. Pollution. It's really weird that we accept it as something normal and take it for granted. I wanted to create a place where citizens, makers, NGOs and governments can experience clean air. A bubble of clean air, where people can think, meet and work together how to make a whole city smog-free. It's a place created by the largest air purifying in the world, which can travel a smog-free tower. In the future, waste should not exist. By putting the captured smog particles on the high pressure, we create smog-free rings. And so by sharing a smog-free ring, you donate a thousand cubic meter of clean air to the city where the smog-free tower is in. when we launched this 10 weeks ago, opened by the, the mayor of Rotterdam. This is, this is how we harvest, by the way, the, the smog, the, the smog particles. We could have made like, like, a, like a stupid little uh, door here, but we wanted some drama, eh? like, like Marilyn Monroe, like whoop, eh? like, like whoop. Eh? You, you know what I mean? Yeah? Okay, yeah, so thank you for that. I have no other way to explain it. So, uh, uh, but the notion of beauty, the notion of drama, and this, I have it, yeah, I think I have it here. Ah, yeah, here. This... This is uh, Beijing smog. So this is the stuff we are sucking up from the skies. Eh? This is in our lungs right now. It's like, ah, you do not want to put this in your coffee. Like, uh, <laughs> bad idea, bad idea. So we had buckets of this stuff standing in our studio Monday morning. And with the project manager, Lidi, we were sort of debating, like, shit, you know, what should we do with it? Is this chemical waste? Should we throw this away? Who should we call? Because we needed the extra space. And then, one peer person in the studio said, like, no, 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 no. You are thinking the wrong way. In the future, waste should not exist. Eh? Think like a circle. Think like a network, like nature does in a way. And so we started to look again at this incredibly dirty bag of, of stuff and realized that 42% is made out of carbon. And carbon under high pressure, you get <laughs> diamonds. Very good. Wow, you're, you are really smart. I should hire you. Uh, uh, <laughs> and so we made smog-free rings. So we compress it. I think I, yeah. Oh yeah, here. I have a magic pocket. So here, this is one of the first smog. We compress it for 30 minutes. And so by sharing a ring, you donate a thousand cubic meter of clean air to the city. And this was very interesting because at that time we had a problem, a budget problem. Eh? New things take, take time and take money, take energy. And so, you know, we pre-financed some things, government helped us, but still, we had a gap. And so, more than 1,600 people have pre-ordered, but even more important, pre-paid the jewelry. <laughs> and so, the profit we made with the jewelry helped us to actually realize the tower. 
So in the new world, you know, waste is not waste, but it's the enabler, it's the matchmaker, it's the motivator in a way to compress. And so I learned two, two very important new words, which I'm going to pronounce right now in a way. Um, uh, what's the, the clean air again? Um, uh, Swatch Bahar? Swatch Bahar? Yes, okay, Swatch Bahar. That's a very important way. So right now we're sort of making a whole series of smog jewelry, including the cufflinks for the gentleman uh, or lady. We also got some requests for uh, piercings. But I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> but to conclude, I, you know, when I was 16 years old, I read Krishnamurti. I visited India when I was still very, very young. I'm intrigued by your complexity and beauty. I'm sort of obsessed by the way cities are evolving. And I'm looking forward uh, to work with you and my Dutch other designers and scientists and, and government to see... <laughs> Thank you. To see how we can improve life together. Thank you so much.